my friends and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name is Alexandra. I am a professional fashion designer, pattern cutter and creative consultant. Very long-winded introduction, but I'm the founder of Digital Pattern Library where I help you build your dream wardrobe through my signature Create, Cut, Construct framework where I teach you the entire fashion process from design through to pattern drafting and of course constructing at the machine. This is actually the first draft of my blouse design which organized chaos is this little thing here and I'm already undecided on the collar and that's kind of what happens when you in the DPL Atelier we do a very structured optional framework cycle where month one we create and design month two we cut and pattern draft to our measurements and month three we construct and sew it at machine however we are in month two at the time of filming meaning we are drafting our designs but even though these are kind of segregated and categorized it just goes to show how intertwining these constructs are and these pillars are because now that i am drafting the pattern and twirling it up even though it's a wearable twirl um i think i've changed my mind on if i want a collar or not i'm not sure so let me know in the comments what you think but i'm kind of enjoying the simplicity simplicity le, 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 of the neckline just being clean anyway this video is not a therapy session over what to do with my designs <laughs> it's actually going to teach you how to finish a woven garment in high-end ways and techniques because i've done years ago i did a high-end luxury sewing tips video that you all really really enjoyed i think it's my most viewed at the moment and a few comments were like, okay, but if I don't overlock wovens, how do I finish them? Because in high-end fashion, the goal is to make the inside of your garment as beautiful as the outside. And even though overlocking the edge of a woven isn't technically incorrect, and of course anything I say in this video is yours to take with a pinch of salt. At the end of the day, you're the designer and it is your discretion what look you like. But having been trained professionally in luxury women's wear, overlocked woven edges which it's just a big no-no it's a sign of cheap construction if you have a look at your wardrobe items that you've bought from the high street you may often find that the woven edges are overlocked this is just a cheaper route of production whereas if you have any designer pieces in your wardrobe or any pieces that you yourself have made you might find flat felt seams, welt seams, bias bound edges, something that takes a little bit more labour but obviously produces a more professional finish. So I'm actually going to go through a few options with you today. Whilst I'm constructing my wearable twirl, this is all just pinned together at the moment on the stand, and I'm going to show you different ways on giving a professional finish to your woven garments. So let's jump in and I will take you along creating this. I have actually been a bit naughty and couldn't wait. I got very impatient and I started digging through my fabric stash to make it hopefully a wearable twirl. But just because I am using final fabrics doesn't mean that I should use um, low standard or low quality construction techniques. So I'm going to do it justice. I have no doubt I'll probably make a few amendments to the pattern following this. But this is me trying to take you along on the journey and teach you a few valuable tips along the way. start by destroying all your trust in me and doing exactly what I've just told you not to <laughs> which is overlocking the edges but this is my side seam here okay and I need a hole in it because this is going to be a wrap front blouse so I need the wrap part of the blouse to be able to go through this and tie around the waist you'll see what I mean at the end of the video it will all come together trust the process but what I'm saying here is there's nothing technically wrong with this, okay? You're also going to notice me create this garment with two colour threads, black and white. Again, you kind of know that I like, I like to call it sustainable, but maybe it's just lazy. <laughs> Both threads complement this textile, so I'm just going to stick with it. But given this is a twirl and I'm just sampling up, I did just want to show you 
what an overlocked edge looks like on a woven. Now you would absolutely overlock the edges on a knit, that is the purpose of an overlock stitch, is to give it that little bit of stretch and move with the fabric so that you don't have any snap threads and it allows you to retain the silhouette and shape. But on a woven, it really is unnecessary or it's just the really quicker way of producing clothing, which is why it is lower cost and a cheaper finish. What I would do here on my final garment is I would probably bias bind these edges rather than overlock them. So my first choice of construction for the shoulder seams is actually going to be a French seam. Now, unlike others or the way you may be familiar with, we actually start by pinning this wrong sides together opposed to right sides together. Now when you're doing a French seam or any other enclosed seam, just ensure you have the correct seam allowance. You're looking at about 1.5 centimetres and above. It's not impossible to do it with a centimetre seam allowance, but of course, understandably, it is more fiddly. So I'm actually going to align my shoulder seams accordingly, wrong sides together. People get really concerned with French seams. It's essentially just doing a straight seam twice and being brave at the iron. You can do French seamed armholes, you can do French seamed side seams, necklines, anything like that. You can absolutely French seam around any curve. It's just a case of taking your time and befriending the iron. So over at the machine, I'm gonna stitch a centimeter seam allowance. I'm then gonna trim away the excess. I'll flip it round, press it, and stitch again to enclose. I have a normal foot in my machine. I have a needle that is 80 slash 12 because this is a thinner fabric. This, by the way, is a viscose twill. And my stitch length is gonna be set to about 2.5 millimeters. I'm gonna put my needle in my work before I start sewing. Back tack accordingly. A back tack is just a uh, reverse line of stitches. Don't really have to do more than one or two. Some people do really big chunky parts of back tack. I would only do that if you're totally confident you don't have to unpick it and or if you are reinforcing a certain stress point on a garment. Two bits of back tack is absolutely fine. and back tack at the end to secure that as well. So here's my shoulder seam. What I'm now gonna do is be careful to trim down as close to my stitch line as possible. Just be careful not to cut through your stitches. I'm then gonna flip this over at the iron and using my thumb and my finger, I'm actually gonna roll this right to the edge so that the seam line there, once I flipped it over, comes right to the edge. I don't want this to be down here and be sewing like so. This is gonna totally alter your seam allowance and throw your um, construction off. So you wanna make sure that when you are pressing this and rolling it, that line there is perfectly on the edge, like so, and just press that down at the iron. I personally like to just flip that and make sure I'm doing it from both sides so that it hasn't rolled one way or another. I did actually show how to do a French seam before in a really old video on YouTube, uh, but it looks like I filmed it on a turnip. So hopefully <laughs> this is a little clearer for you to understand. Depending on your textile, you may want to use a pressing cloth. But just give that a good press. And now at the machine, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew a line of stitching 0.5 centimeters from the edge, meaning that one centimeter to begin with, plus this 0.5 is my 1.5 seam allowance in total. And because this is now right sides facing with the fabric right sides facing each other, this is gonna enclose that seam and give a really professional, neat finish. The smaller your French seam, the more delicate and more high-end it looks. So you don't really wanna be going bigger than half a centimeter. See how much you can challenge yourself on this and how narrow you can make it. It is perfect for translucent and sheer lightweight fabrics or something quite delicate and drapey like this here. If you feel more comfortable to do so, you may also pin your fabric in place. But if you've given it a good enough press at the machine and you're maintaining your work being flat on your sewing machine bed here, you should be able to get away without pinning. 
And then here is your French seam sewn across. And when we turn this right sides out, it's enclosed everything. It's a really beautiful finish, a nice enclosed seam on the inside. There's no raw edges there. We've really captured it all in this. I will push my seam allowance to the back now. And so that will be a really nice high quality shoulder seam. It's also great to reinforce because obviously there is two line of stitches there. Two lines, two lines of stitches there, if I can get my words out. I'm gonna do a rolled hem finish around the armhole. This design actually has a um, layered drop shoulder with a sleeve that protrudes from underneath it. So now that I've done my shoulder seam here, which is an enclosed French seam, I've got my side seams here, which are naughty, naughty slap on the wrist overlocked. I'm actually going to do a rolled hem finish around the edge of this armhole. And I'm gonna do that with a machine foot. Now there is a tutorial on how to do it by hand over in the DPL Atelier alongside how to do it by machine. Um, but this here is a rolled hem foot. If you have a look at that in comparison, you will be able to see the difference. So with a rolled hem foot, you have this little curled loop underneath. And what this does is it turns the fabric over and secures it in place. I'm just gonna fix this to my machine. I actually find hand sewing a rolled hem one of the most therapeutic um, hand sewing processes. And it's very satisfying because as you pull the thread, it um, pulls everything in. And it's such a beautiful way to finish silk scarves or anything delicate like that. But I'm just going to, I haven't put my needle through my work, but if I zoom in on this or take that out, you can see as I slide it in, I'm tucking it up and under this loop and the foot will take over from there. Now I'm actually putting this in at the wrong area on the garment. I'm putting this in at the top of the shoulder. What I would do is I would actually start at the underarm because that is where it's least likely to be seen. So where you start and finish your stitch line, just in case there are any discrepancies or it's not the neatest of seamless finishes, then under the arm is where it's less likely to be seen when the garment is worn. So I wouldn't actually start right at the top on the shoulder point because that is probably the most visible part, especially on this design where the drop shoulder is a feature. So I'm gonna start by popping my needle in my work. My stitch length is still 2.5 and I'm just gonna allow this foot to take the fabric and feed it round. It's really important I keep the rest of my work as flat as possible. I don't wanna get anything caught under here like so. So I'm just gonna take my time with it and work my way all around the armhole. Notice how the foot is, is the wrong side of the fabric. So this is gonna be rolling it into the wrong side of the fabric and securing that down. Essentially, it's gonna do a very micro double roll or double hem, perfect for delicate finishes on fabrics. If your bobbin thread, Fred? Who's Fred? If your bobbin thread is different to your top thread, then it's really important to know that it's the bobbin thread that will be seen on the outside. So maybe just make sure you're happy with that colour, check your tension, all of that. Try on a bit of sample piece of fabric before attacking your final garment. Hello, future Alex here. I just wanted to say, as I'm continuing to construct my sample, that it's a really good idea to trim away your seam allowance excess as you get to the bulk using a rolled hem foot. Just so that when you're feeding this through, it doesn't actually jam or jar. This is overlock because it's the facing that I'm adding. So this won't be seen from the right side. That doesn't matter at all, but yeah. Future Alex, over and out. And it's also really important that as you're feeding the fabric into the foot, you maintain the same amount of fabric all the way round. So if you're feeding this much in, make sure that you are keeping that consistent and not making it narrower or wider at any given point. And you can have a look there at how this is tucking everything under and stitching it in place. And then from the right side, the same going on. So it's really delicate. It's less than half a centimeter. And it's such a perfect dainty finish for garments like this. There we have it. Here is a rolled hem finish around my armhole. So yet again, it's like a micro double fold that has just enclosed those frayed edges in. Really pretty, really delicate.
Next up, we're going to do a bias bound finish. Now, there's so many reasons why I like bias bound finishes. Firstly, because it's an amazing use of scraps. This is from a pair of trousers I made. It was leftover fabric. So to make your own bias binding, you just cut it 45 degrees to the straight grain. So it would be something like this. You would be drawing on strips like so, and you'd cut out a load of strips. You then sew them all together. You fold it in like so, and you've got bias tape. So it's a really amazing use of scrap fabric. You can create really pretty colors and designs. You can actually buy it pre-made in different sizes, in different colors, in different textiles. And how you can bias bind edges, one way which I won't be going through today, but I'll show you and you'll understand what I mean, is you simply sandwich the raw edge between the bias binding. So this, 45 degree strip of fabric here has been folded in twice. So we fold one edge in, the lower edge, the upper edge. So this already has given us a nice folded edge either side. You would then place your textile in and you would fold that up again. And so both sides of the textile, right and wrong, have been sandwiched by a bit of bias binding. And then you would just secure that in place with a line of stitches along here, which if you have folded it accurately and you've pinned it accurately and you take your time, would also secure it this side as well. That is one way of finishing with a bias bound edge. And if we revert back to my side seams on this design that have been overlocked, this is actually the method that I would prefer to use. And of course I could do it in color matched here or like match my textile. I've got a load of scraps here that I could kind of go through and make my own bias tape. Or as I say, if you find it easier, you can buy pre-made. There's also nifty gadgets. And this isn't a bias making or ta bias tape making tutorial, so I'm not gonna go through it, but you also get these nifty gadgets and you feed textile through here and it will fold it, pre-fold it for you and come out this end. I hate these. <laughs> Please let me know in the comments if you love or hate them because I feel like it's a divided camp. A lot of people love them because they're meant to make it easier, but I really hate these. I genuinely, no matter how delicate it is, just prefer folding it by hand at an iron. Obviously, the larger the bias tape, the easier it is to fold and press, which I guess is why people take these or take to these, um, but my gosh, I really dislike these. They actually make the job so much more tricky than it needs to be. Maybe I've just bought dud ones? I don't know, I really don't know. An alternative way to use bias binding as a finish is one that isn't seen from the front because the way I've just shown you sandwiches it, meaning that the bias tape is seen from the both, from both the right side and the wrong side. But this way, the bias tape is just gonna be on the interior. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna start by unfolding one edge of this bias tape. I'm just gonna run my thumb along it like so, so that unfolds. That's it folded over and I'm actually unfolding just the one edge and running my thumb along. I'm then going to pin this to the edge of my sleeve and I'm going to stitch along that fold line and just secure this bit of bias tape to the edge of my sleeve. And then I'm just gonna trim away any excess And I'm going to sew a line all along here, about half a centimetre, along the hem of my sleeve. Now that is having half a centimetre hem allowance in mind, okay? Now at the iron, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this down and flip that to the wrong side and give that a really good press. And so from the right side, you actually can't see the bias tape, 
but from the wrong side it's got a really nice finish to this edge now if you weren't enclosing elastic you would simply stitch along this edge here to secure that in place meaning you would have visible stitches from this side unless you chose to slip stitch slip stitch slip stitch i've always got a sean connery cameo in these videos do a hand stitch along the edge here you would be picking up just a couple fibers at a time and that would give you a really nice invisible finish if you didn't want a visible line of stitching what i'm going to do as an added extra to this design is i'm actually going to enclose a little bit of elastic running all the way through this bias bound trim so that the base of my sleeve gathers for the design Before I go ahead and do this, I just want to say, in addition to this and pressing it under, you could also understitch to help with the fold. So what that would involve is pressing your seam allowance into the bias binding like it is here and just edge stitching along the edge on the bias binding. That is going to help your work roll under and keep that really nice and secure. Because I'm doing this little elastic feature, I won't be doing that today. But I hope that that makes sense in terms of improving your sewing projects. So I'm just going to stitch this closed. I'll stretch this at the machine as I do it. And then once that's secure, this should gather the bottom of my sleeve nicely. My final way of finishing a woven then is actually to use a facing. Now facings are solid bits of fabric, often cut in the same textile as your outer shell, but you can absolutely be the designer here and play around with it. A contrast in textile, just like the bias bound finish, can be a really fun detail. And basically, you're just going to use it to stitch right sides together around your raw edge. So here we've got my neckline and opening. And here we've got my facing, which is basically a replication of the pattern. It's just smaller. I'm not doing the entire bodice. I'm just going to be facing part of it. And so what we're going to see is it will be lining the inside almost like so. You can see that I have rolled edge finished the facing piece. You would fuse this with iron on interfacing, whether that's lightweight, medium weight or heavyweight, depending on your textile. I'm really being lazy today and just cutting corners. I want to see how this design looks. I want to make amendments to the pattern. And then I obviously want to sew up my final one. Your facing would be reinforced and stabilized with a little bit of iron on interfacing. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pin it up along my neckline and opening right sides together. And then I'm just going to sew with a centimeter seam allowance and turn it over and press it in. Now, as you're gonna see, all of these raw edges, once we sew that along and turn it through, are gonna be nice and enclosed on the inside as well, with this edge being rolled hemmed and neat. Great for curved edges, great for kind of, if you're doing a scallop neckline or something like that, you definitely would be doing a facing. We have tutorials on how to draft facings over in the DPL Atelier, adding facings to a garment, when, where, why, what, and how. But this is gonna be my last high-end finish to this woven sample today. So let me get started pinning all the way round. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to stitch all the way around this edge at the sewing machine. Making sure that you don't snip through your stitches. It's really important that you clip a concave and you notch a convex curve. I'm going to trim away at the points. I'm 
This is just going to relieve the tension and make your garment lie nice and flat. Trim away any excess, remove bulk. And I'm going to take this over to the iron and I'm going to press that the right way round. What I can then do is I can understitch this and this is going to help my facing curl under. Like I mentioned with the bias binding, as we come to the points by here, you're not going to be able to get your understitch right round the corner. So I would understitch as far as you can, all the way down this edge, there would be a break in my stitching and then I'd have a look at understitching all the way round the facing there before pressing it again at the iron. So let's do that. So to understitch my facing, I'm going to have my work spread out like this. This is my facing, this is my main garment. If I pull this up, you can see that my seam allowance is pushed towards my facing, in towards my facing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my foot and my needle as close as I can and I'm actually going to edge stitch all along my neckline and making sure as I go that I'm pushing my seam allowance in towards the facing and this is going to help everything roll round really nicely. I hope you enjoyed following me along as I sampled this design for the first time. There's definitely already some changes that I'm going to make, i.e. lengthening the bodice. I think I'm going to introduce more volume into the sleeve and I definitely want to make the drop shoulder feature more prominent just so that it lengthens the shoulder line and comes off a little bit more to really highlight that that is a little design detail. As I was constructing this I also thought that finishing this armhole with the contrast bias bound edge would be really cute as a little peekaboo effect highlighting that design detail even further but it's very unlike me to twirl up and put so much effort into it. Usually I am twirling in calico just doing gen generic open pressed seams but I really wanted to hopefully inspire you on how to elevate your sewing projects creating high-end finishes on those woven seams so let me know how you get on comment down below what design changes you might make to this I know the neckline might be a little bit daring for some but your girl is a member of the itty bitty titty committee and there will be no spillage from me, I assure you. It's like two mosquito bites or two peas on an ironing board. Um, so I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'm pretty chilled with having that much chest on show. But again, let me know your thoughts on adding a collar or not adding a collar. I think I will keep it quite minimum because there is quite a lot going on here. But I really hope you enjoyed this style of video. I really hope that you found some tips, tricks and techniques to implement in your next sewing project. And of course, let me know in the comments what you're working on so that I can cheer you on and support you. If you want that to be the case even further, come and join us in the DPL Atelier, my affordable fashion membership, where I give you hand-holding support to build your dream wardrobe. For now, I will catch you on the flip side.